Hi, I'm Dr. Incognito. In this video, we're going to discuss U substitution in integration. U substitution. Uh, U substitution is used primarily to reverse the chain rule. Uh, integration in general reverses differentiation. Uh, and U substitution is typically used to reverse uh, the chain rule. So let's take a look at the chain rule. And let's suppose that the derivative of capital F of x is equal to little f of x. Then the derivative of capital F of g of x would be, from the chain rule, the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. So it would be the derivative of capital F is little f is the notation that I'm going to use here. So little f of g of x leave the inside in. When you take the derivative of the outside, you leave the inside in. And then times the derivative of the inside, which is g prime of x. Now going backward, this formula says the integral of f of g of x times g prime of x dx is equal to capital F of g of x plus c. So that would be an integration formula. But this formula is pretty clumsy and hard to use. And so u substitution is going to give us a way to turn this left side into the right side. So let's analyze the general method first. So suppose we're looking at the integral of f of g of x times g prime of x. So we're looking at the integral of a composition where times the derivative of the inside. So we have a composition, and then we have another factor, which is the derivative of the inside of the composition. <clears throat> so U substitution is used primarily for this structure. So composition times derivative of the inside of the composition. The details of a U substitution go like this. We let u be the inside function. So u is equal to g of x. And then we compute the differential du. That would be g prime of x dx. So we can now transform the original integral into an integral in the variable u. It will be the integral of f of u. I'm doing a substitution there. u is substituting in for g of x. So f of u right there. And then this g prime of x dx is d. So we get a new integral, which is a lot simpler looking. It's the integral of f of u du. And the antiderivative of little f is capital F. So this is capital F of u plus c. And then the final answer is obtained by back substituting u equals g of x. So we can say f of g of x plus c which is what we already knew, because we're just reversing the chain rule, but this is a process to get from this left side to that right side, uh, which is a series of small steps, because this in general is a one very large step. <clears throat> so let's take a look. Suppose we have the integral of 3x squared times x cubed plus 4 to the seventh power. If you look at this structure, it is exactly the same as this, except for the g prime is written on the left side of the composition. Uh, here's our composition. The inside is x cubed plus 4. The outside function is the seventh power function. Then if you take the derivative of the inside, you get 3x squared. So that's our g prime of x. And this is, the inside here is g of x. So the process says let u equal g of x, which in this case is x cubed plus 4. Then du is g prime, which is 3x squared dx. And now substituting the original integral equals the integral of, this becomes simply u to the seventh. And the 3x squared dx, if I was to rewrite it with the 3x squared on the right, then it would look like this. g prime of x dx, 3x squared dx is du. 
So now we have a basic integral in the variable u. The integral of u to the seventh du from the power rule is u to the eighth over eight plus c. And then we back substitute what u was equal to. u was equal to x cubed plus four. So the final answer is x cubed plus four to the eighth over eight plus c. As another example, suppose we have the integral of e to the x times the sine of e to the x. So here we have our composition, the sine of e to the x, and e to the x, this factor here, is the derivative of the inside. So sine of e to the x is our composition, and then times e to the x that's the form f of g of x times g prime of x. So we let u equal e to the x, and then du, the differential du, is equal to e to the x dx. So it's important to distinguish between the e to the x's here. This is the one that we're letting uh, u equal, that's the inside of the composition. This extra factor here is the g prime of x right there. So this one is part of the du. The e to the x here, in conjunction with the dx, that's the du. So the integral transforms into the integral of sine of u, du. Sine of u, and then times e to the x dx, which is du. And this is a basic integral. So we could say this, is, uh, this one's negative cosine of u. Think about that for a second. If we take the derivative of cosine, we would get negative sine. And we don't want negative sine. So if we take the derivative of negative cosine, we get sine. And final answer, negative cosine of e to the x plus c. One more example. the integral of x over x squared plus 1. The integral of x over x squared plus 1. This one doesn't quite appear to have a composition, although we could rewrite x over x squared plus 1 as x times x squared plus 1 to the power negative 1. And then we can see a composition here. x squared plus 1 is inside of the reciprocal function. Uh, but even if you don't think of this as a composition, you see the function x squared plus 1, and you see its derivative. The derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x. So we see its derivative, well, almost. So I want to do a u substitution with u equals x squared plus 1. Then du is 2x dx. So I'm missing a 2 there, and I'll take advantage of uh, a nice property with integrals and constants. I can put a 2 there and a 1 half there, and I haven't changed the problem. I haven't changed the value, because this 2 can come out, and a half times 2 is 1. I've taken the original problem, and I've multiplied it by 1 in the form 1 half times 2. So again, I've done that so that I now have exactly the du in the problem. So now we have this transforms into 1 half integral of 1 over u du. The 2x dx becomes the du, and the x squared plus 1 on the bottom becomes this u right here. So 1 over u du. And this is a basic integral. The idea, again, in a u substitution is to turn a, an integral that's not basic, like this one, into a basic integral using the u substitution. So 1 half log absolute value of u plus c, so 1 half log x squared plus 1 plus c. I dropped my absolute values because u was positive. x squared plus 1 is at least 1, so the absolute values weren't necessary, so I dropped them. It 
wasn't an accident. In general, it's a good idea to write them, but if you're sure that the thing is positive, then you don't need them. Okay, so that's a look at U substitution. Thank you for watching.